Hey guys, I'm Brian. Recently, one of my students came up to me and said, Brian, is it possible for you to fly your airplane over the shadow during the eclipse and stay in totality longer than everybody else on the ground? Now, when I say student, I teach AI how to make drawings of human hands. It's a work in progress, but we're getting there. Anyway, stick around if you want the answer to the eclipse question. I think you're going to be a little surprised. All right, welcome to science class, guys. So uh, the question is, can you fly your airplane the same speed as the shadow during the eclipse and stay in totality a lot longer than those just on the ground watching it go by? And the answer is actually yes. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, I'm not even good at math, but I did the math, I gave it my best shot. And from what I determined, the speed that the shadow goes across the Earth's surface is not a whole lot different than the speed that I fly in my Comanche. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to attempt to take off and I'm gonna fly to the zone of totality, which fortunately for me is almost right here. Like this is the 99% range. Uh, and so what I wanna do is I wanna get up and I'm gonna fly the same speed as the shadow, the direction the shadow's going. And I believe I can stay in totality uh, for as long as I've got fuel in the plane and I'm gonna prove it. Um, just for those of you who don't know how an eclipse works, I'm gonna go ahead and explain it to you. Um, I don't have any kind of scale model of the solar system to show how this works, but I got a couple just, so just bear with me on these random objects. So for the purposes of uh, this demonstration, the Earth is going to be represented by this um, squirrel nutcracker. Uh, the sun will be represented by this plastic human foot. And the moon will be the skeleton of this dead bird. Now I'm going to show you exactly how a solar eclipse works. All right, so as you know, we've got the Earth, we've got the sun, and we've got the moon. And again, this isn't an accurate representation. The scale's slightly off, uh, but everything else is going to be what I'm going to say is true. So we've got the Earth, we've got the sun, we've got the moon. And as you know, the sun goes around uh, the Earth. Every morning the sun rises, and every evening the sun sets. And it goes left or right. Now, what you also know is if you studied science, like I have, I am, a, by the way, a computer scientist. Uh, that was my degree, so I, this is all legit science. As you know, orbits are not perfect circles. Orbits are oblong, okay? And so what happens about every 2,400 years is, and, and all these things are kind of moving a little bit. The Earth, everything's moving, but they're, they're oblong. They're not round. And so an orbit is not always the same thing. So periodically what happens is these oblong orbits get set up in such a way that the sun will actually go around the moon. And so now the sun is on the outside of the moon. The earth is still here. And so what happens now is this, if you were sitting on the sun, and I don't know if they've done this, but if you're on the sun, suddenly the earth goes away, okay? But if you're on the earth, the moon is now here, and so the sun goes away. Let me show, I wanna make it a little, make more sense. Earth, sun, moon, every day. Perfectly normal. Everybody understands this is true. Wake up, go to bed. Wake up, go to bed. However, this is also going around everything. Moonrise, moonset, and then sometimes when it's on the side like this, that's when you get your full moon. And then sometimes when it's like this, you have a quarter moon, half moon, new moon, and so because the sun's in the way. So, but what happens is sometimes because the orbits are oblong, you get this thing where the moon comes around. Oh, and what do we have? That's right. We have an eclipse because the foot, the sun, the foot, can't see through the bird. A real bird skeleton, it could, there's not a lot there. And, but so if you're looking from the earth and you're like, oh no, where did the sun go? And if you're on the sun, you're like, oh no, where did the earth go? What if you're on the moon? You're like, oh, I can't see the earth and I'm hot on this side. And so I, what happens if you're on the moon during a solar eclipse? I don't know. No one, if anyone knows in the comments, tell me what happens if you're on the moon during a solar eclipse. Would you be able to see the earth? I don't know. That's an important question. Uh, we'll answer that in another video later. But so now the question becomes, can I uh, fly my plane along the shadow that's being cast on the earth by the sun? And so to show you a little bit, what I'm gonna do is this pizza box is gonna represent the shadow of the moon, uh, which has gotten in between the sun and the earth. And this little airplane is going to represent an airplane. And this table is going to represent the Earth. This is where we are. This is not really Earth. This is a table. So now, here comes the, the, the moon getting in between the, the sun, and that's the shadow. And so the question is, you know, this, this is totality from here to here. If you're in this area uh, on the Earth, you're going to see, the whole world's going to feel like it just ended. So, leading edge of the moon shadow, trailing edge of the moon shadow, in comes Brian in his airplane. So the question becomes, can I meet the leading edge of that shadow, so I'm flying, I'm airborne, this is the Earth. I'm not actually on the other side of the moon, this is just the shadow. Don't, the, remember, the moon is, is this guy, 
he's actually like that. That's what's creating the shadow of the pizza box. So just to clarify, don't think I'm flying on the other side of the moon. That's not real science. That would be stupid. This, this, this rest of this is real. Can I, as the shadow moves across the earth, can I fly my plane and stay in totality? And if so, for how long? I got about six, six and a half hours of fuel in my plane. Could I stay in totality uh, for that whole time if I don't run out of fuel? Uh, I think you can. And I'm going to go fuel up my airplane. We're going to go to the airport. And we're going to fly kind of over by Paris, Texas, which is a little more. I'm in Corinth, Texas. If you look, I'm like right there in it. And, but I, I thought about just having some people over and watching it from here. But um, for you guys and for science, uh, I want to prove that this can be done. So we're going to hop in the plane. We're going to fly east of here just about, I don't know, 45 minutes. And I'm going to try to intercept the leading edge of the moon shadow. And we're going to see how long we can stay in it. So uh, let's hop in the plane. So we're out here headed towards uh, eastern part of Texas where we're going to get to totality for uh, the eclipse. It's already started to get a little bit dark, but I'm only about probably 15 minutes away from what I'm calling the leading edge of the moon's shadow. So what I want to do is um, kind of converge uh, where the leading edge of the shadow is. So many people flying today. Everybody wants to fly during the eclipse. Um, so I want to kind of merge, converge with the leading edge of the moon's shadow, and then I'm going to just haul butt as fast as I can and try to stay in uh, the shadow of the moon. I, it, I don't know. I, if I'm doing the math right, I should be able to stay and, and follow it as it travels across the Earth. Now, what we don't want to do is travel faster than the moon's shadow and end up outracing it. So you're in the eclipse, and then you're out of the eclipse, then you have to slow down, and you're, you're back in the eclipse. You get what's called a double eclipse. It's not good. It confuses the airplane. So we're officially in totality and right now I'm doing about 180 miles an hour and uh, if I have done the math properly, which I'm almost certain I have, um, I should be able to pace this thing uh, and stay along with it uh, for, for really forever. Like I could just go around the world over and over and over. Obviously fuel is you know, not going to allow me to do that, I'd run out of fuel. Uh, but so I'm here in totality, I'm going to go ahead and start a timer on the screen. Uh, we'll see how long we can stay in it, but uh, right now it feels like I'm going the same speed as, as the shadow of the moon. I do find it just a little bit odd that I can, I can see that the moon is out. Uh, it's not something I would have expected uh, during an eclipse. There's also a small chance that it's just nighttime, um, but we can prove that. What we'll do is we will just stay flying, uh, and then uh, in 12 hours, if it's uh, if it's light again, uh, then we miss the eclipse and it's just nighttime. But if we're if it's still dark, that means we're still chasing the shadow. Uh, yeah. So there's ways to figure out all the questions. All right, so far this has worked out perfectly. I'm up to 30 minutes uh, in what, totality. Like I can't, I'm, I'm right in the shadow of the moon and we're tracing it uh, from southwest to northeast across the United States. Uh, we went up across Arkansas or whatever states northeast of Texas. And uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of people probably thought that wasn't something that was possible. But you know, if you listen to people who say things aren't possible, then you know, you're never gonna, you're never gonna do anything. So, uh, all right. I've proven it. You can, you can race the shadow of the moon and you can stay in totality. Um, if you had enough fuel, we'd probably just go around the world over and over and over and just always be in an eclipse. All right, guys, I hate to do this, but it looks like we're in a good news, bad news situation. Um, man, I'm embarrassed. Uh, bad news. I, earlier in the video, I said I'm, I'm not good with math. I'm also not good with calendars. I thought the eclipse was last Tuesday. It turns out it's this Tuesday. 
Uh, so I completely missed the mark on that. Uh, that's, that's the bad news. The good news is I've knocked out all my night uh, hour requirements for, for uh, my, next, my next rating that I'm working on. I'm, I'm, I'm current to carry past. So I'm, 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 I'm current for night. That's great. That's, I mean, almost as good as proving that you can fly through the shadow of an eclipse uh, for an extended period of time and maintain it. But uh, uh, so, no, I, I completely missed it. But I will tell you this. At the beginning of the video, I did ask if it's possible to fly in the shadow of the eclipse and stay in totality longer. And the answer I said was yes, it's actually true. I'm gonna to link to a video in the description. I think it was in 1973, the Concorde actually did this. And I don't, I haven't watched the video, I just did a little bit of, uh, of research because I'd heard that it happened. Um, apparently the Concorde did fly and stay in totality for uh, an extended period of time. Uh, what I understand is the shadow of the moon actually moves around somewhere between 1,000 and 1,100 miles an hour, which is, it's just a touch faster than the Comanche, uh, but the Concorde, on the other hand, is slightly faster than the Comanche, and it actually pulled it off. So uh, if you're interested in seeing that this was actually done, uh, I'll put a link to that video uh, in the description, or you can just Google it, uh, Concorde Eclipse, uh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm actually going to go out now and enjoy the real Eclipse. I uh, hope you guys have fun. I appreciate all the people that watch the channel and share the videos and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Gold Seal, for sponsoring the channel. Thanks to the Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys fly smart, and I'll catch you on the next one. And going to sun and fun tomorrow. So I uh, hope to see some of you guys there. Click this link to see the most recent video upload. Click this link to see a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Click this link to subscribe to my channel.